Hidden in the African savanna is a tree as vast and old as time. Inside it lives the all-knowing Funzi, part robot, part sage, but nobody knows her true age. With help from her young friends at Team Sayari, they learn how to help the planet around me. Armed with cues and clues, they look to solve Funzi's missions with trailblazing adventures and planet-saving expeditions. No, Marisa, you do it like this. Your foot forward, then back, quick three steps, left, right, and center. How is that supposed to make any sense? Funzi could do it. Couldn't you, Funzi? I can dance circles around you, Riley. Now we're in a dance squad. Do you know who else can dance better than any of us? Not Marita. Very funny. <laughs> Bees. Bees? As in bzz, bees, bees? Yes, it's called the waggle dance. By performing this dance, bees can share information about the direction and distance to patches of flowers for nectar. The waggle dance may not be around too much longer. What do you mean? Did the bees stop dancing? Bees are actually disappearing. What? How? Why? Well, that's the mission for today. Why are bees disappearing and how can we stop that from happening? Are you in? Mission time! Mission time! It's always good to start our mission with you, Say. Are you ready? Ready! Are you ready? Ready! You say? Why are bees disappearing? <laughs> I don't know. Most of them, when they sting, they normally die because of us humans. Because uh, bees don't like wind. Um, I think pollution. Yeah, you think about that. Can you repeat the question? Other people um, pick up flowers too much. A lot of people are allergic and therefore are scared of them and hurt them. You say? Some answers were so funny and some were spot on. Riley, what would you do to protect bees? If I was a bee, I'd hide my hives underwater close to the sharks and stingrays. Riley, bees can't breathe underwater. Oh, yeah, so bad idea? Yeah. And we still don't know why the bees are disappearing. Funzi? Absolute mondo. Let's look at some clues. Clue time! A queen's crown. A minute work sign, a drone, and an empty produce aisle. I don't get it. We need some help. Punzi? Sure. Let's go to Musanze, Rwanda, where our field reporter Christian is on the ground. Patching you in now. Muraho and welcome to Rwanda. My name is Christian and I'm in Nyakinama village. I'm here to go back in time and learn about traditional beekeeping in the village. Hi there, my name is Christian and I'm looking for a bee expert. My name is John Didu and I'm an expert in beekeeping. Okay, what is this that you're making? This is a hive. A hive? How did you learn how to make this beehive? This is our family's traditional method. Maybe I should start by showing you the preparation so that you can get an understanding of what it takes. So I see it's made with bamboo yeah. and fibers, banana fibers. Of course. And this is the, mud. the base is mud and a cow dung mixture. We then cover it with banana tree bark. We tighten it with string so that it can hang in a tree. And now we're going to put the hive in a tree so the bees start living in it. Okay, we're done. But what about the drones? In a hive, there are three kinds of bees. 
there is one queen, there are drones, and you will find worker bees. Workers are female, drones are always male. I've been as busy as I be today. I've learned so much about bees and now I know that they're more than just honey and stings. Fonzi gave me a clue about a drone, but I think it means the male bees. Bye now, I'm off to have some honey. It's so interesting to see how beehives are made out of organic materials. I've never seen that before. We learned about traditional beekeeping and the different bees that make up a hive. And one of them is a drone. That's it. The clue is the mating bee known as the drone. Clue solved! Exactitious. Well done, Team S. Yeah, we're so clever. Absolute mando. <laughs> but why are the bees disappearing? That's a great question, Marita. Bees are disappearing due to pesticides, drought, habitat destruction, nutrition deficit, air pollution, and so much more. Many of these reasons are related to each other. We can't afford to lose the bees. No, we can't. Did you know, for instance, that bees help to pollinate flowers? Without bees, even flowers would die. That would be horrible. Maybe we can learn more by solving more clues. Let's do it. We still have the queen's crown, the man at work sign, and the empty produce aisle. Funzi, fun fact? Absolute mondo. <laughs> Bumblebees have smelly footprints. They use bee scents to tell apart relatives and strangers amongst them. And to determine which foods and flowers have already been visited. You could say they have a rather efficient stanky leg. How fast can you move your arms? Try moving them 20 times a second. Impossible? How about 10 times? Five? Now think on this. Honeybees can beat their wings 200 times every second. What are you wearing? Isn't it obvious? Bee feelers and wings. I'm standing in support of the bees. Who's with me? I'm with you. Thanks, Funzi. Here, a pair of bee feelers just for you. <laughs> and now you're part of the team too, Riley. No way, but I wouldn't mind a mighty sting. Ding, stay back, bee destroyers. I'm Riley, the bee sting. <laughs> okay, bee warrior. Bonzi, what's next? Processing. Here are fun facts to help you out even more. Who runs the hives? Girls! Girls! Or, more accurately, female bees. First, all bees in a hive are the offspring of the queen who produces certain chemicals that regulate the actions of the other bees in the hive. Second, all worker bees in a hive are female. Males, called drones, lead the hive in search of other young queens ready to start new colonies. Those are some pretty fantastic fun facts. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, they were pretty fantastic. But I don't think there were any clues. Let's see. We have the men at work road sign. An empty produce aisle. And a queen's crown to solve. Funzi, I think it's time for another field report. Exactitious. Let's see what our field reporter Tando in Johannesburg, South Africa has for us. Patching you in now. Mulweni! Hi Team Sayari! Welcome to South Africa! My name is Tando and we are in Johannesburg. Today I'm going to hang out at a very special hotel. The rooms are too tiny for humans to fit in, but you know what can? Bees! Let's go check it out! <laughs> Hello, 
Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. My name is Tando from Team Sayari. How are you? I'm Dr. Siobhan Reynolds. This looks interesting. What is this? This is a bee hotel. It provides nesting sites for solitary bees. Oh, I know of honeybees, right? How many types of bees are there? These are solitary bees, so they don't live in a hive with the queen like your honeybees do. And there's about 30,000 species across the world of bees, okay? So they're incredibly important for pollination. Without them, we wouldn't have all of the food that we're able to eat. So what we're doing here is providing a safe space in order for them to thrive. The project idea was to put hundreds of these across the whole landscape of Johannesburg. But in order to do that, I needed to get people to help me make all these bee hotels. And this is where I'm going to introduce you to my bestie, Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi, Siobhan. Tando, I'm going to leave you with Kim so you can learn all about the bee hotels. Very nice to meet you. And I um, make bee hotels. Oh, that's cool. So, bees usually live in hives. Is this considered a hive as well? Good question. No, it's not considered a hive. Each little hole is a house. I have a very cool hotel here to show you. So this is what we call an open view hotel. So this is what is happening inside one of those holes. In one house, there's many different rooms and they make different bedrooms. And in each bedroom, they will put some pollen and some nectar so that when the egg hatches, the larvae has something to eat. Solitary bees are very important for our survival. How can we help them? Number one is just sharing the news about solitary bees. Secondly, um, you can get a bee hotel or you can make your own bee hotel. Thank you for having me. I've learned a lot here. Nice to have you. I never thought bees could live outside of a hive. I had so much fun learning about different types of bees. I hope you guys did too. Now I'm off to busy myself. Be safe. That was amazing. I didn't know there were so many types of bees. And we also learned bees are very important for pollination. And pollination is how plants reproduce. And if plants can't reproduce, there won't be any fruits or seeds. Or any food for us to eat. Yes, we solved it! No food equals empty produce aisles. That's another clue solved. Great job, Team S. So, Funzi, will there be a prize for that? Actually, yes. Maisha is going to teach us how to make our very own bee hotel. Patching you in. Funzi Fox. Hello, Team S. This is Funzi's box, and today we're going to make something really cool. A bee hotel. Here's what you'll need. A clean tin with the lid off. A stapler, tape or glue. Three toilet paper rolls. Scrap paper, newspaper or any type of paper. A hammer. A nail. Two paints, yellow and black. Some glue. Scissors. Two paintbrushes and some string. That's everything. Our first step is to paint the tin. Put some paint on your tin and don't be afraid to get messy. Spread it evenly along the tin. Keep painting until you've covered the whole surface of the tin. Guys, check this out. I'm really messy, but it's all about having fun, right? Once your tin is dry, it should look a little bit like this. We're gonna paint the stripes on. Paint a line going around near the top of your tin. Try to keep your paintbrush steady and cover the whole area. Once you've done the first line, we're going to do the second one. Isn't it starting to look like a bee hotel? Now I'm going to show you what we're using the newspapers for. Cut the scrap paper so it's a little shorter than the can. Roll up the scrap paper around a pencil at least five times. The walls need to be thick so the baby's bees stay warm during winter. Tape the paper while it's on the pencil three times and then remove it from the pencil. You'll need about 30 little tubes of paper to fill the can. Cover the bottom of the can with some glue. Swirl it around so that everything is even. Put the three paper rolls in the can. The rolls are in here so that the little tubes don't rattle too much. Fill the toilet rolls with the tubes. Keep going until everything fits well but isn't squashed together. Well, voila! 
Here you have it, a bee hotel. Remember to let it dry for at least an hour so the glue is nice and firm. Now you can go and hang it up anywhere you want and you've got a bee hotel. Let's get busy making beehives for our solitary bee friends. Go Harry! That was such an amazing DIY, Punzi. I'm definitely gonna be making one. <laughs> Welcome to the bee team, Riley. Doesn't it feel good to be a bee? I'm supposed to be Riley the bee warrior, not some cute little bee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Riley. We'll make you get your mighty bee warrior costume someday. Yes, just like a team, like Brave bees, right, Funzi? Right. You know who else is brave? Patching in to our friend Sylvia, the bee whisperer in Gilgil, Kenya. Hello, Team Sayari. My name is Sylvia Bani Banana. Today, we are going to inspect the beehive. Come on, let's go. I was taught to handle bees by my dad. When I was nine years old, I got stung and then I started shouting. Then my father told me not to panic and the bees calmed down. Now I'm not afraid of bees, but when they sting, it is painful. It is important to wear the bee suit because it protects us from the sting. The honeybee produces food eaten by man. Bees make honey, make wax, and they have a venom that can make a medicine. I like bees because they help us in pollination, and without bees there will be no pollination, and without pollination there will be no food. The boss of the beehive is the queen who runs the beehive, and the queen is the one who guides the behavior of the other bees. All the workers are female. Their work is to bring nectar and pollen, and protect the hive, and drones are males, and their work is to fertilize the queen. Bees eat nectar, pollen, and... In a hive there is two layers, the brood box and the super. The super is where they produce honey which you will harvest, and the brood is where they put their own food. So when you harvest all the honey, there are still some food left for the bees to eat. You can protect the bees by planting trees, flowers, and stop deforestation. Team Zahari, I would like you to advise people to plant more trees, flowers, and build more beehives. What are you doing? I've been influenced by Sylvia Boni. I'm going to become a beekeeper. It's not that easy. And bees do really sting. Plus, some people are allergic. Marita is right. We should always be careful around bees. If you're allergic to bees, you might go into anaphylactic shock and be rushed to hospital. This is life-threatening, so you must be very careful. That's a good point to note, Funzi. And we must always be careful. <laughs> we just have two more clues to solve. The Queen's crown and the men at work sign. Hmm. Sylvia's hives had worker bees, drone bees, and of course, a queen bee. We did it! Two clues in one! The queen's crown means the queen bee and the empty produce aisle means we need bees for pollination for food. The drone equals the drone bees and the men at work side means the worker bees. Mission complete! Mission complete! You see, you did it. You learned the waggle dance. Let's waggle. Imagine a world without the waggle dance. A world without bees. That would be awful. So true. It's time for a world without. Bzz, bzz, is the sound a busy bee makes 
Getting things done, doing whatever it takes. But mankind and bees sometimes don't get along. Because both these creatures are known to be headstrong. See, a world without bees could mean an end to us all. Because bees are monumental in preventing our fall. They pollinate the plants, making them all grow, ensuring we've got food to eat, and still they've got more to show. Fostering biodiversity, getting all species moving, promoting health and wealth, they keep the rest of us grooving. They may sting, but when they sing, you know they're doing their thing. So do your part and conserve, and the whole world you will serve. We won't let that world without bees happen. And we'll always have the work go down. That's right, because we've learned that we've always lived with and kept bees. If the bees disappear, it would affect our food supplies. We've also learned how to build bee hotels and provide safe places for solitary bees. It is possible to keep our bees from disappearing. Right, guys? Right. All right, Funzi. Let's see you do the waggle dance. Watch and learn, kids. Watch and learn. <laughs>